In 1993, he was world champion at the age of 21. Three years later, the bombshell. Lance Armstrong had testicular cancer. His world had collapsed. One of cycling's greatest was on the brink of death, but Armstrong was about to climb his highest mountain. As Armstrong now has torn his rivals apart here in the Tour de France. But this kind of performance is panache. This is heroic. This is what the Tour de France is all about. And that's what this man's life is all about. He has achieved yet another page in this fairy story that just goes on. Yes, I think it's a miracle. After six straight wins, Lance Armstrong defines the Tour de France. It's a pas de cadeau, pas de cadeau, no gifts. 2005 promises to be an emotional farewell and his challengers are ready for battle. The Kaiser is firing on all guns now. Basso gets the stage win. The Australians are here too. To keep the green sprinter's jersey on an Australian back for the fourth consecutive year. It's unbelievable. Uh, the hardest, most grueling, body thrashing month of pain you could ever imagine. Welcome to the world's biggest annual sporting event. 3,600 kilometers, 21 stages, 189 riders. It promises to be a hell of a ride. Well, the Tour de France official presentation was held last night, and let me tell you, it was a glittering affair. But the biggest cheer was reserved for the man who's won this event six times, and of course, he's worn the yellow jersey on many, many occasions. And that, of course, is Lance Armstrong, who was pretty emotional at the glittering presentation. I was nervous last year because I, I, I had the impression that, uh, that I was up against um, not, not, a, not a demon, but uh, when over 100 years or 101 years, there's, there's been some of the greats of cycling had never been able to win a sixth tour. Many people said that that just means simply it's not possible for, for some other reason, a higher reason. And uh, that's an incredible burden to get rid of. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm not chasing history. I'm not uh, chasing a record. I'm not chasing a legacy. I'm just here to have a good time and enjoy my last tour and, and enjoy the, the, the good form that I think I have. Um, and every day will be special. Every finish will be special. But I can't let the that feeling and that emotion um, interfere with what I'm trying to do here because it's uh, for me it's not a, a promenade around France I'm, I'm still trying to win a record number 10 Australians will line up for today's opening stage time trial and let me tell you there's quality among our Aussies we should be very proud because Australian cycling continues to be on a high let's have a look at the names starting with Robbie McEwen he's going for stage wins and a green jersey Stuart O'Grady also in line for stage victories Baden Cook another sprinter challenging for stages and the green jersey Brad McGee his aim is for overall honors and perhaps stage wins here and there Alan Davis is a Queenslander also chasing the green jersey and what about Michael Rogers, a world champion with GC ambitions? And then you have your deputants, Cadell Evans, Matt White, Simon Gerrans, and Luke Roberts. It really is a great list of Aussies. Here is the course for the opening stage time trial. It's 19 kilometres in distance from Fiorentine to Noir Moutier in the west of France, the Vendée region. Just 19 kilometres in distance over a flat, fast track. Let's go to the highlights. As always, your commentators are Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. Starting off number 19, Dave Zabriskie of the United States and Team CSC is no stranger to time trialling. He was the winner this year of a time trial stage of the Giro d'Italia, right ahead of his own teammate. Coming into the finish line very early on, recording the fastest time, a time of 20 minutes and 51 seconds. That is the time to beat. That is the time that everybody is going to try and knock off the top. 
Yes, and today the cycling world will focus on the 92nd Tour de France here on the island of Noirmoutier. And everybody stunned by a very early time set by Dave Zabriskie of America, 20 minutes, 51 seconds. It's not just his time, though, Paul. It is indeed the time gaps he has over the riders. I tell you what, it's very important because this is no prologue time trial where riders are battling for just seconds. This is an individual time trial where riders are actually battling for minutes. I think it's interesting to note at the first time check after 9.6 kilometers, although Dave Zabriskie of the United States has the fastest time, Alexander Vinokurov has gone through there in second place, only 21 seconds in arrears. Well, we've just seen the departure there of Michael Bogart, himself a pretty much a regular here. You can always recognize him because of those white teeth, which always grit. Now, Vinokurov, one of the big rivals we expect to be of Lance Armstrong over the next three weeks, is setting a mark. He's second best time at the first check at uh, 9.6 kilometers, but even so, Paul, 21 seconds slower there than Dave Zabriskie. Alexander Vinokurov is looking at a time of 20 minutes and 51 seconds. That's the time of Dave Zabriskie. He's not too worried about that. I think for Vinokurov, the most important thing is to lay down the foundations early on in the possible ride towards a podium position. This is the final corner. He's coming around here. This man has never really been a great individual time trialist, Phil, but look at the face. That is the mask of the big days. He's really giving it everything. Well, he's not going to hit Zabriskie's time, and that's a huge feather in the young American's first time in the Tour de France, but Alexander Vinokurov is thinking three weeks' time, 21.44 for him that is a superb ride he'll slot into second place that is now official 21.44.97 he drops in in second place and Zabriskie well he's seen one of his big rivals here for a stage win slip by and he's beaten him Stewie O'Grady one of the most titled track riders in the world in fact the Olympic gold medalist in the Madison rather amazing uh, in Athens looking at O'Grady because he rode the road race caught the plane up to Germany to start training on the track for a couple of days then after that decided he would fly, fly back to Athens team up with Graham Brown and got himself the gold medal in the Madison on that occasion and that is a pretty impressive performance and there is the world champion going out we almost missed the start there of the Australian Michael Rogers but we got back in time he's wearing the colors of a world champion here Michael Rogers now from Canberra is underway well Rogers has got a very good chance of rivaling the times here of Dave Zabriskie Zabriskie has got the fastest time at 9.6 kilometers and I tell you what this man might be the first man to challenge he was world champion two years ago after David Miller was had the title taken away for him from a doping infringement and then he won it in his own right last year he was all oh, a bit risky that's what you have to do if you want to win a time trial you take all the maximum risks going around the corners because you do not want to lose a fraction of a second on these corners this young man, look at this, look at the way he went round there, just a little bit of a flick, he had the wrong line, you see these riders have looked at this course, but unfortunately when you think about this, these men are not riding the race at race speeds when they go out. So as we continue the countdown now in the start line, big Tom Bonham makes his move here. Two-time stage winner of the Tour last year. This man is a sprinter. He's going to give uh, Robbie McEwen and Baden Cook and anybody else who wants to get involved a real battle in the sprinters. He won't do a lot in the time trial, but watch out for him on the last day in Paris because he won that stage a year ago. Thomas Vaucler, last year's yellow jersey, last year's French national champion, is not going to set the Tour de France on fire, and the man coming in behind him there is Michael Rogers. And there is Thomas Vaucler's time, 23.40 is his time, and he's lost uh, quite a lot of time there to Zabriskie. But there's Rogers just crossing the line, and we lost the time there because yeah, two riders came in very close together. But I tell you what, that wasn't a great ride by Michael Rogers. I would say around about 31st place. Another Australian rolling down the ramp here, Cadell Evans, a former great mountain biker, and now a great hint for the And future. at last he's made the Tour de France. I think he's broken his collarbone eight times uh, since he was born. And now Cadell Evans finally gets his start in the Tour de France. 
we talk about this man as a future winner of this race. Well, today we're going to get some idea. Ivan Basso gets the nod. He's on his way. He knows the times that are being recorded. The only ones he'll be interested in are still to start behind him, Ulrich and Armstrong. Two minutes behind him, Lance Armstrong. One minute behind him, Jan Ulrich. But this man, Phil, from last year to this, has completely and utterly changed his time trial position. He's also changed his time trial cadence. He's spinning those wheels just like Lance Armstrong spins his leg in the individual time trial. But for him, this is an important rendezvous. Bradley McGee, look at the shape, hunched over the handlebars, trying to get himself as aerodynamic as possible, but not riding the same form that took him to the prologue win two years ago. 